For access to the sheet that I used in this video to help determine the navicular drop, follow the link below in the description. In this video, we're going to be discussing the navicular drop test, which is a special test that's used to identify excessive subtalar pronation during weight bearing. Now, some navicular drop is normal, but excessive navicular drop is associated with excessive subtalar pronation, which in turn is associated with increased risk for conditions such as medial tibial stress syndrome, plantar fasciitis, and patellofemoral pain syndrome. To perform this test, the patient will initially be seated at the edge of the table, like you see here. And for the purpose of this video, we're going to be assessing the navicular drop in my right foot there. So my right foot will be at rest on the floor. It will have the normal contact points between the plantar surface and the floor. But there's absolutely no weight bearing through that foot, through that entire lower extremity. So the foot is essentially just sitting on top of the carpet fibers, but no weight is being borne through that foot. Now, in this non-weight-bearing position of the foot, we're going to locate the navicular tuberosity and mark it with a small dot, preferably with permanent markers so we can see it easily in the next few steps. Now, the navicular is palpable on the medial aspect of the foot, and the navicular tuberosity specifically is inferior and anterior to the medial malleolus. Next, while still in this non-weight-bearing position, we need to bring the talus into its neutral position, which is aptly named subtalar joint neutral. So to locate subtalar joint neutral, the PT will place their thumb and index finger on either side of the talus. That'll look like this. Okay. Now, subtalar joint neutral is approximately the position of the talus at which the PT feels the talus equally with both palpating fingers, the thumb and the index finger. So in other words, if you feel the talus more with your thumb than you do your index finger, that's not subtalar joint neutral. Okay? Vice versa, if you feel it more with your index finger, that's also not subtalar joint neutral. You need to feel it approximately equally with both fingers. And so in order to find it, the patient's going to have to invert or evert, depending on where their neutral is, until the PT feels that talus equally with both fingers. Okay? So there's a little bit of eversion, a little bit of inversion, might take a little toggling to find. But once the patient has found that subtalar joint neutral, they're going to hold that position. And then, while still in that non-weight bearing state, and with the foot in subtalar joint neutral, you're going to measure the distance from the floor to the navicular tuberosity. And there's two ways to do this. Number one, you can take out a ruler and get a direct measurement from the floor to the navicular tuberosity, and you would need to write that number down. We're going to term that the non-weight-bearing distance. Okay. The other way you can do this is you can have a piece of paper like this, and you can simply mark where the navicular tuberosity is in that position. Now we have the patient stand up, and at this point they are weight-bearing through that foot. And as you might guess, we're now going to remeasure the distance between the floor and the navicular tuberosity. And you're going to perform that measurement based on how you did it in the previous step. Okay? So you can put the ruler against the foot right here and directly take the measurement between the floor and the navicular tuberosity. You would record that as your weight-bearing distance right here. Or you can use the sheet of paper and then mark off where the navicular tuberosity is. Either way, we have all the information we need now to calculate the navicular drop. So if you took the two measurements separately, wrote the numbers down, then you're going to subtract them and take the difference. So what you do is you take the distance in non-weight bearing and subtract the distance in weight bearing, and that would be the navicular drop. Or if you use the paper method here, you just take the distance between these two marks. So again, the top one here would be zero. This line right here is one centimeter. So it looks to me like the navicular drop is about 1.1, 1.2 centimeters, which is 11 or 12 millimeters. Now down here, you can see a positive navicular drop test is where this quantity, which is the navicular drop, is greater than one centimeter. This means that normal is one centimeter or less. So in any individual, we expect some navicular drop but it's excessive when it's beyond one centimeter, and the more navicular drop you have, most likely the more subtalar pronation you also have, and the greater risk you are at developing these conditions 
right here. So based on the fact that mine is about 1.1, 1.2 centimeters, I do have a slightly excessive navicular drop, and I would be at increased risk for these conditions right here. And I can tell you I've actually had in the past a little bit of patellofemoral pain syndrome.